Heat pump installations are definitely a specialist work, and some installations are harder than others. And this one is the hard one, because we've got a large uninsulated period property, big heavy external unit that requires planning application, no space in the airing cupboard for new heat, and also a very questionable existing heating system. So, can a heat pump even work on this system? Well, there's only one way to find out. While we were waiting for the heat pump, Murray started building footings. We need to get it through this super narrow passageway and you need probably four people to carry that heat pump comfortably. Units delivered to the garden. Heat pump base is done. What's left is soak away. Very conveniently, before we started, they've put a uh, box here, new consumer unit for batteries that are inside the house so we can tap into this there's new supply as well so that's all excellent very convenient so what we do we run it on the outside in trunking all the way to where the unit will go so we've got a soak away done with four inch pipe inside drilled through and the gravel will go around it okay stop for putting it down we'll, we'll straighten it yeah that's fine people ask how anti fuse valves are connected in this case we've got uh inch and a quarter going to 35 copper and I don't have a bigger anti-freeze valve, so I'm reducing that to 28, 28 here, and then it goes back to 35. Now, if you are worried about pressure loss on a smaller anti-freeze valve or two reducers to 28 mil, it, it really doesn't matter because this is such a short distance that that pressure loss over such a short uh, run is really negligible. And in here, I only have bits of 35 mil insulation because I've ordered tons of it. Most of it was delivered is 28 mil. So for me to be able to carry on, I'll just cut what, whatever was delivered to smaller bits. Normally I would have put insulation on this pipe work straight away so I don't have to cut it on the back. Now I'll have to. Boiler's gone. We're getting ready in our plant room. Buffer vessels on the wall. Unvented expansion on the wall. We cut through the wall as well. So this is flow and return going to the plant room. Manifold, we moved it out of the way because it used to be here. That's where the cylinder goes, so we have to extend pipe work to the manifold. Outside, we've got a unit positioned in place and just a little bit of pipe work to finish off. Two very short flexible hoses to connect to the return. On the return, I've got anti freeze valve. On a flow, I don't because we don't need to. And they can fail, so we've got a 50% higher chance of success only installing one. Switch on the wall. And it's kind of a long run of primary pipe work because it goes here from the unit, then it drops down, goes across below the window and up to the plant room right there. So I only have two, three solder connections to be done there and primary pipe work outside is finished. We can test it and then finish with uh, all the insulation. I'm starting assembling my plant room. We'll go here where the washing machine and the dryer was. We moved them to the other side of the kitchen. This is the hallway and we go upstairs and upstairs here we've got existing unvented. Our new plant room is somewhere where, where Marie is standing right now below that bathroom so we have to take all of those pipes, run them under the floor and drop them down and we have to run flow and return for the first and second floor. Main supply from here back to new plant room, uh, hot water and also balanced cold. So five pipes, three of them 22s, two of them 28s. This is why we're using a buffer. Tons of push fit pipe work on central heating. 15 mil polybutylene pipe work. I'll be upgrading this pipe work going up the stairs to as far as practically possible. Quarter to five and all we're trying to do is to connect the cylinder on immersion heater so they have hot water because their cylinder is already gone. We should be able to do it in 15 minutes provided we have no leaks, which would be great if we don't. So you can see those clips here going over insulation and Marie is cutting it using this little thingy, it's called Lager Pro and this insulation so and it gets you really really nice miters. We're gonna seal all the joints with bond and seal from Condens Pro as well and all this kit seems to work really well and it gives you nice very nice looking neat finish. So on this installation I'm trying a new diverter 
And what's the difference between this diverter and your regular Honeywell supplied with the cylinder? They both 28 mil connections. However, Honeywell is a KV value of, uh, I believe, 8. And this unit is KV value of 10. What does it mean? KV value is uh, amount of uh, water in cubic meters per hour that will cause a difference of pressure across the valve or on either side of the valve of one bar. Which means the higher the higher that value is, the lower the pressure loss through through the valve. So to give you an idea on our installation, we need about 2,000 liters uh, per hour or around 30, 30 few liters per minute. And on this very valve, on Honeywell, we're gonna get almost half a meter pressure drop, f uh, almost five kilopascals. And on this valve, we only get uh, 2.9, I think, almost three kilopascals or 0.3 meter pressure drop. That the waterways or the opening inside is much larger than on Honeywell. The body of this valve is slightly larger. I know that people are saying that those balls inside, they start letting by on those valves if the flow is too high, like 2000 liters per hour. So we'll see how this one performs. Much bigger ball, hopefully stronger spring as well. When it comes to existing pipe work, what I always try to do is to find the middle of the system so I can split my load. So on a 10 kilowatt heat loss property as this one, depending on a length of pipe work, we probably want minimum 28 millimeter pipe work, maybe even 35 on a primary run. What we had here is the boiler used to be there and the primary pipe work went to the uh, cupboard above us. And from there, the pipe work was going throughout the whole property. What I've done, I've run my flow up there back to where the zone valve used to be. And again, it goes throughout the whole property. However, if I connect to those two, which I've already done, flow and returns that used to supply the manifold, I can use those two 22 millimeters pipe work for the whole of the ground floor radiators. Now, obviously, there is still pipe work going up, which creates a bypass on the system. So I have to find that flow and return where it comes down and cap it off. And that way, those two pipes take care of the ground floor. Underflow heating is done on its own 22 millimeters pipe work. And then 28 millimeters going for the first floor and the loft and that way I've got a really good chance for the system to perform very efficiently. I still have a buffer and the reason for the buffer is because the whole house is piped in polybutylene pipe work. So this is heating flow and return right here that I have to reconnect to my 28 mil. One goes to the bedroom that, uh, that side, the other one goes to the rest of the house first floor and 15 mil to the loft. So by eliminating ground floor, we're gonna be putting much less load or one third less load on that 22 millimeter uh, polybutylene pipe work. So we've got much higher chances of the system performing at correct flow rates. Most of the pipe work for the system is finished so I can pressure test it now and test outside as well. You can see the pressure gauge is right up there and we are on half a bar right now. Every time you smash the like button, YouTube promotes this video to a wider audience and more heat pumps get installed. The more heat pumps we installed, the less gas we use. And the less gas we use, the fewer resources are available to despot dictators around the world. Smash that like button now, because you know it makes sense. I will let Marie finish the lugging and I'll go and pick up radiators. Because we'll be swapping some radiators here as well. So what is the catch of installing uh, heat pumps in period properties? Well, the heat loss is larger, so we need larger radiators and larger heat pumps. As a matter of fact, this property could have worked without many upgrades to radiators whatsoever. It would be probably at best comparable at running costs to gas. If we want an efficient and cheap to run system, we need to run it at low flow temperatures. And the lower the flow temperature, the larger the radiators. The fact that the flow temperature is low, it doesn't mean that the property is going to be cold. No, it's exactly the same temperature as with any other flow temperature if the radiators are sized right. So in this case, we are sizing radiators to 45 degrees Celsius flow. So the mean water temperature or average temperature of the radiator is going to be 42.5. 
when it's minus two outside and they're gonna be even cooler the warmer it gets outside because they're gonna work on weather comp. This is 600 by 1400 and that's what's needed for an office square meter it's about 15 square meters has two external walls and an uninsulated subfloor and walls are solid brick none of them are insulated now I have to stick my head out and turn this setup on in the rain I just fired the unit and I'm in the middle of commissioning it and I still have to put the external sensor outside but the unit's running running on hot water right now because the temperature in the store is only uh, 27 degrees right now let's have a look at the unit outside so yeah the unit's running as you can see by the foliage being moved by the air from the unit pretty decently quiet let's check the flow rate we should be getting close to 2000 liters a minute on the unit right now so I wasn't getting the flow rate. I'm expecting 2000 liters uh, per hour through the cylinder and I was only getting half that again last on the last job. That little strainer was reducing the flow in half from 2000 liters to 1000 liter per hour. Who would have thought? So I'm gonna take it out for now and come back and swap that ball valve for a bigger size. So the unit is now running with the correct flow rate on heating only and now for the difficult part of balancing the flow between the unit and the buffer and this other pump that circulates the water around the system because on hot water we only relying on the pump inside the unit and it doesn't even go through the buffer it just goes to this diverter valve to the cylinder and right back to the unit on heating however it doesn't go to water because it's hot water priority it just go here to the buffer and then with that pump pumps water around the system and for the system efficiency or the highest potential efficiency we have to balance the flow rates on both sides so if I'm getting 2000 liters between the buffer and the unit I want a comparable rate on this pump on the system as well 2.1 cubic meters that's pretty much where I want to be this is very comparable flow rate to the flow rate on the unit so the taco setter registers no flow whatsoever no matter the pump setting not sure what I'm doing wrong here so the reason why taco setter doesn't work and I'm getting wrong flow and returns temperatures and I can't balance it is because I am a muppet total muppet that pump is pumping in the wrong way. Now my taco setter is working. Finally, let me show you. And showing 45 liters a minute. We don't need that much. So right now I'm getting very comparable figures on the pump and on this taco setter flow meter. So it is possible to balance it through the buffer, we're getting the same DT5 both sides. Half a degree difference on the flow and return temperatures. I think this is pretty close, or I would call it close enough. All radiators are getting warm, including loft radiators that supposedly they never work, you say? Haven't worked properly for years and oh. years and years. Oh, that's nice, so this heat pump should keep this house warmer than the boiler used to. We finished, we commissioned the whole job. I'm really happy how it's turned out and I'm very very curious how this system will perform because it's not only period property it also runs on a buffer which we all know can create distortion and lower the efficiency of the system however I don't think we had much choice here because of the questionable pipe work on the system so I'm super curious and will definitely revisit this job maybe even in the winter or early spring next year to see how it performs Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.